The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, an official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Are you one of the 50 million Americans covered by Social Security? If so, have you any clear idea of your rights and benefits under Social Security? Well, there may be a pleasant surprise in store for you, for in a few minutes you will learn from our sponsor, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States, how easy it is to build Social Security into full security. Tonight's FBI file... The walkie-talkie stick-ups. During six horrible years of war, millions of human beings were slaughtered. And today, countless other millions are homeless and starving all because the younger generations of two nations had been imbued with a savage contempt for the rights and property of others. Had grown up in the belief that the way to get what you want was to steal it, and if necessary, use a gun. Today, the lives and rights and property of American citizens are being assaulted by the biggest army of criminals in the country's entire history. How old are they? More than one out of five is under 21 years of age, and the percentage is increasing. Last year, the largest number of arrests in all age groups was of boys and girls 17 years old. Boys more or less like those in tonight's case from the files of your FBI. Young Jack Chase, whose crippled leg had long since earned him the cruel nickname Gimpy, spent most of his time in his little workshop in the cellar of the Chase House in Cincinnati. And that's where he was that afternoon when his younger brother Freddie and Betty's running mate, Knuckles Butler, brought him a problem to solve for them. Can we come in, Jack? Huh? Oh, sure. Come ahead. Go ahead, Knuckles. Okay. Me and Knuckles want you to show us how to work something. Oh, what do you got? If you lay off what you're doing a minute, Gimpy, we'll show you. My name is Jack. Okay. Look these things over, will you, Jack? Hey. Walkie-talkie radio sets. That's right. They're brand new. Mm-hmm. And they got U.S. Army stamped on them, too. No kidding. Where did you and Knuckles get these, Freddy? Well, we, we got My them My cousin down... just got home from the Army. He had them, and we borrowed them. Okay? Yeah, that's right, Jack. Uh, that's where we got them. I see. How do they work? Well, they have to be set at the same frequency first. Then what? Well, I'll show you. Let's see. We'll make it 112 megacycles. We'll make the wavelength about two and a half meters. Hey, what does that mean, Jack? Well, uh, oh, it would take too long to explain. You want to set this other too, don't you? Yeah. Let's see. There we are. I'll pull out the antenna like this. Mm-hmm. When you want to talk, what do you do? I'll flip the switch over this way. Well, what about when the other guy is talking? You flip it back. I get it. Now, how can we tell if these things are working? Well, uh, I'll go outside and see if we can make contact. Okay. Uh, leave your switch like it is till you hear me. Right. This looks like it's going to be real easy, Knuckles. Yeah. Do you talk now? He said, wait for him. I ain't going to do anything. This is Jack. Any. Can you hear me talking, Knuckles? Over. Yeah, sure. I heard you swell. Let me say something, huh? Get away. Well, look, how am I going to help you out in that job Shut if up, you don't... stupid. The switch is open. What job is that, Fred? Fred, do you hear me? He didn't say job. He said joke. We're going to take these things out tonight and have some fun. Hey, Knuckles. This is Freddy. 
Where are you now? I'm on the roof of the warehouse, you dope. And quit talking unless you got to warn me about something. Okay. Everything is still all clear down here. I found the door to the stairs that lead down inside. The nylons are supposed to be on the top floor, so it oughtn't to take me long. Just keep a watch out for the cops. I'm going down in now. I won't say another word unless I have to. Go ahead. Stopping there. Wait a second. No. No, it's going on by. Whew. Had me scared for a minute. Next time, stupid, don't holler unless it's real trouble. Now shut up. That'll be enough. Here. What? Don't move and you won't get hurt. Okay. Could have got you coming down the steps. I heard you ever since you got in the roof. Yeah? I just wanted to see how you were working. So now you know. Yeah. Pretty smart. Using walkie-talkies, eh? Now, wait a minute. Don't flip that switch so your pal can hear what's going on. I want to get him, too. Knuckles, how you doing? I don't answer him to tell you. Give me that thing. I'll handle the switch and tell you what to say. My knuckles. Something wrong? Answer me. All right, now. When I flip the switch, you tell him what I say for it to tell him. You get it? Sure. I got it. You get this, too! Ooh. Knuckles, are you okay? Sure, kid. I'll get the nylons and be with you in a minute. <laughs> Some two hours later that night, in the office of Agent in Charge Revere of the Cincinnati field office of the FBI. I'm a night watchman down at the Medford Brothers warehouse, Mr. Revere. You seem to have taken quite a going over. Yeah, you had a pretty good knock in the head, I guess. What happened? Well, I've already reported the burglary to the police, but I thought you fellows might be interested, too. You say burglary? Yes, a couple of hours ago. Two kids pulled it. Kids, huh? There's an awful lot of them getting in trouble these days. Yeah. Now, when I came to you, I remember reading in the paper this morning about that army stuff that was broken into down on the river docks last night. Oh, yes, yes. There were some binoculars and walkie-talkie radio sets stolen. And these kids tonight, Mr. Revere, used walkie-talkies. What? Huh? One of them was posted down the street for lookout, while the other one come inside by the roof to steal some nylon. Let's see. I should have held on to the one kid I had instead of trying to get him to get the other one inside, too. That's when you got struck down? That's right. Did you get a look at his walkie-talkie set at all? Yes, it had U.S. Army stamped on it, mister. You must have been able to get a pretty fair description of the boy, too. Yes, sir, I'd say he's about 17 or 18. Oh, uh, just a minute. I want to get Special Agent Niles in on this. Yes, sir. And then we'll get to work and see if we can save a couple of youngsters from getting into even more serious trouble than they have tonight. Jack. Oh, well, what is it, friend? Has Knuckles been here? No. Where is that guy? Supposed to meet me here an hour ago. You're seeing quite a bit of him lately, aren't you? Yeah, why? Ah, he's not a good guy to hang around with. Now, wait a minute. Since when are you running my life? I'm just giving you some good advice. Well, save it. You know, he was arrested last month for breaking into a candy store over on Front Street. They didn't hang that job on him. He got off. Nevertheless, he was guilty. And you know it. All I know is he's the right guy, so lay off him. Well, look, Freddy... My only concern is that he doesn't get you into trouble. Stop preaching, will you? I can look out for myself. Revere speaking. This is Niles, Mr. Revere. Good, I'm glad you called in. But I haven't got any lead on those kids yet. Maybe I have. What? A woman just phoned. 
She'd read about the walkie-talkies being stolen. Yeah? Yeah, she saw a kid next door to her house yesterday afternoon using one. Uh-uh. The boy has a crippled leg, so he couldn't have been the one who slugged the night watchman. But he could have been the one who played lookout. Mm, it's possible. Anyway, you better hop out and have a talk with the boy. Here's the name and address. Men. Hello. Hello. Are you Jack Chase? Yeah, that's right. My name is Niles. I'm a special agent of the FBI. FBI? That's right. Well, what are you doing here? I'd like to ask you a few questions. Okay. What about? A walkie-talkie radio set. Huh? Do you have one around here? No, sir. Why? A neighbor of yours said she saw you using one yesterday afternoon. Look, what's this all about? A robbery was committed last night by two boys. They used walkie-talkies. They believe they're the same ones that were stolen from an army warehouse. I don't know anything about them. I understand you have a brother. Yeah, that's right. Is he around? No, sir. But I'm sure he didn't have anything to do with it either. We, we were both home last night when that robbery was committed. I can prove it. How do you know you can? Because I... I didn't tell you what time the robbery happened. Well, I... I don't have to know the time. Oh, I see. Well, Jack, I guess that'll be all for now. Sorry I can't help you, mister. Maybe you will yet, one way or another. So long, son. Hey, what kept you, Knuckles? I had to wait around to see that guy downtown. Did he buy the nylons? Sure. How much? Fifty bucks. Fifty? But they're worth ten times that. You told me yourself. Look, we're just starting. Wait until we get a rep. Then we can write our own ticket. I took a lot of chances for a measly fifth. Save the beefs, will you? Is your brother in the cellar? I don't know. Let's go see. Why? I'd like to clip him for a couple of chisels. Come on. What do you need chisels for? How do you think we break into places? Ringing doorbells? Oh. Go ahead. Okay. Hi, Jack. I've been waiting for you, Freddy. Yeah? Yeah. And you too, Knuckles. What for? I had a visitor a little while ago. He was from the FBI. Huh? What did he want? I think you already know. What are you talking about? Those walkie-talkies. You didn't get them from your cousin, Knuckles. Sure I did. You're lying. They were stolen from the army. That ain't so. Shut up, Fred. They were used last night in a robbery at a warehouse. You too committed that robbery. Gosh, you're crazy. Oh, no. The FBI tried to pin on me because somebody saw me trying out the walkie-talkies yesterday. What'd you tell them? Nothing. Yes. What do you mean by that? I'm going to give you both a chance first to go down to the FBI and tell them you did it. What do you want to do, see your own brother thrown in the clink? He'll only get in worse trouble hanging around with you. Well... Gonna do as I say, Freddy? No. Okay. I gave you your chance. Wait a minute, Gimp. Yeah? Where do you think you're going? You won't confess, so I'm gonna do it for you. Oh, no, you ain't. Get out of my way. Are you kidding? Oh, hey, hey, don't, Knuckles. Keep out of this. Oh, Knuckles. Shut up. That should keep him quiet. Let's get out of here. We will return in just a moment to tonight's case, which shows how your FBI helps provide national security. And now let's listen in on a conversation about social security between a man named... Mike McNulty and his friend, the Equitable Society representative. Hey, what do you take me for? A big shot with a fancy salary? How can a man who earns $60 a week think of retiring at 65 with an income of $100 a month? Because you've got a good old uncle who's going to help you do just that, Mike. Uncle? I've no rich uncle. My father's only brother died last year, and all he left was debts. No, Mike, the uncle I'm talking about is Uncle Sam. What you'll get from Uncle Sam's Social Security 
Gives you a big head start towards that $100 a month when you're still young. And what do you think of that? Me, Mike McNulty, a gentleman of leisure at 65, thanks to my fine uncle and his fine social security. Yes, Mike, many Americans have never discovered how easy it is to build social security into full security through life insurance. Most people are amazed when they discover how little it costs. For instance, if you already own some life insurance, your equitable society man may be able to show you how only a few dollars extra per month will give your wife complete protection and assure you a comfortable retirement income through the Equitable Extended Income Plan. Remember, your Social Security benefits vary according to your age, salary, and family situation. Why not get the facts? Find out exactly what you're entitled to under Social Security. The government has prepared a special card that will help you secure this information. To obtain one of these cards, Get in touch with your Equitable Society representative or send your name and address on a postcard to the Equitable Society, care of this station. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file... The walkie-talkie stick-up. In Europe, it was a lawless army of swaggering, arrogant young Nazi bullies who took what they wanted by force and savagely struck down even the helpless and defenseless who stood in their way. In America today, it is a lawless and rapidly growing army of swaggering, arrogant young bullies who are taking what they want by force. In Cincinnati that day, it was one such bully who struck down a crippled boy. And it was that boy's own brother who stood by and watched the beating. It was early in the evening of the same day that Special Agent Niles of the FBI opened the door to room 21 in a Cincinnati hospital. Hello, Jackie. What? Oh, hello. The nurse said I could come in. Okay? Okay. Thanks. How did you know I was here? I went to your house again a while ago to see you. What'd they tell you? That you told them it was a hit-and-run driver that knocked you down. Well, that's what it was. <laughs> Automobiles can mess up a fellow like you're messed up, Jack, but I never knew one to reach out and punch their victim in the eye, too. What do you mean? You've got a beautiful shiner. Look, I got it just... Jack, where's your brother? I don't know. You mean he hasn't even been here to see you? Oh, yeah, sure. Sure he was here. Well, then he must have come in and gone out by the window. Nobody in the hospital saw him. Nobody home knows where he is. Nobody at Knuckles' house knows where he is, either. Knuckles? That's the nickname of the boy who slugged the watchman last night, and your brother has a pal by that nickname... Your folks told me. Oh. Why did they beat you up? Who said they did? I could tell today that you'd guessed who committed that crime last night, so when you wouldn't talk, I left you alone. Now, look, mister... Then I... you went to Freddy and Knuckles and advised them to confess, and that's when they beat you up, isn't it? I'm not talking. Look, you're not sparing your folks or Freddy either, Jack. What do you mean? You're letting them in for a much bigger shock later on. You're only saving Freddy for that day when he kills somebody and gets sent to the electric chair. How do you feel about that, knowing that you could have prevented it? What do you want to know? Everything I've said is the truth, isn't it? Yes. Then where are they? I don't know. Honest, I don't. All right, but you can still help. Maybe you can tell me something about those walkie-talkies. Freddy. Yeah? Do me a favor, will you? What? Quit sneaking along the street like you're wearing a convict suit. I, I can't help it. Look, we got here to Louisville okay, didn't we? Yeah, but... And what... nobody knows we're here. But they'll keep looking, Knuckles. And when they get to Louisville, we'll be gone. Only guys that stop moving and stop using their heads get caught. Maybe so. We gotta get a hangout. 
Then case out another job. I've got to raise some dough first. Come on. Where are we going? To find a hock shop. What for? I'm going to hock these binoculars. That'll bring us 20, 25. Yeah, but what'll a guy think when he sees U.S. Army stamped on them? He'll know he's getting the best there is, that's all. Let's go. You send for me, Mr. Revere? Yes. That alert we put out on the walkie-talkies and binoculars last night has paid off. Yes? Yeah? I just got a call from the office in Louisville. What happened? Two kids answering the description of the ones we're after pawned some army binoculars there about an hour ago. Oh, then I guess I better start rolling. Spencer of the Louisville office will be waiting to give you a hand. Good. All I hope is the kids don't get rid of those walkie-talkies, too. Set, Freddy. I got us a job all cased out for tonight. You look like you're getting ready to go somewhere. I was just waiting until you got back to tell you. Tell me what? I'm going back home. You're what? I made up my mind, Knuckles. I'm leaving. Oh. Now sit down. Look. Look, it won't do any good to act that way, Knuckles. Maybe I didn't hit you hard enough. No matter what you do, I'm quitting. You can't quit even if I let you. Why not? You're up to your ears now, same as I am. I don't care. I'm going back home and give myself up, and you ought to do the same, Knuckles. Not me. I'm just getting started, and when we finish this job, I'm heading west. No, no, I'm not helping you. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> After tonight, I don't want you. I'll get somebody with some guts. But this job we do together. Maybe they're not going to pull anything tonight, Niles. We better wait it out, Spencer. Maybe they changed their frequency. According to the brother, they don't know that much about it. He had to set it for them. Well, our receiver is set at 112 megacycles, too. I wish it would pick up something. Of course, it's possible they might be doing a job without the walkie-talkies, but wait I... Wait a minute. Huh? Hello? Hello, Knuckles? This is it, Niles. Shh. Hello, Knuckles? Answer me. I told you not to talk tonight unless there was trouble. But you've been in there so long, I got worried. I'll be out in a minute. And with plenty, too. Where are you? Still across the street where you left me. Hey. <laughs> How is this for a laugh, Freddy? What? I'm getting our binoculars back, too. That does it, now. Yeah, step on it. <laughs> Freddy? What do you say, Knuckles? I'm starting out the back way now, the way I came in. All clear out front? Yeah. Everything's all clear, Knuckles. I'm afraid you're wrong, Freddy. Huh? Freddy, what's the matter? Who said that? Special agent of the FBI, Knuckles. Huh? We just picked up Freddy outside. Well, what is this? I'm a special agent, too, and you're both coming back to Cincinnati. How, how did you find us? When we get to Cincinnati, I'll let a certain cripple boy tell you all about it, son. Come on. Because of his youth and his sincere desire to go straight again, young Freddie Chase was released to his parents and put on his good behavior for a period of six months. The boy called Knuckles Butler, however, showed no spirit of repentance whatsoever. And he is now serving a term in a school of correction. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a timely message on the subject of juvenile delinquency from the director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Mr. J. Edgar Hoover. America's crime bill runs into billions annually. 
if it could be diverted, the standard of living of every family in the nation would be raised. Increasingly, our crime problem is becoming a youth problem. A generation of right living and right thinking could bring crime to a minimum. If all parents would devote only a little more time to their children, learning to know and understand them, influencing them by example, winning their confidences by companionship, and instilling in them a heartfelt respect for the rights of others and for constituted authority, they would be investing in their future happiness and security. It is not too late to capitalize upon the vacation theme, a time when many young people are not thoroughly occupied now that school is out. Your son or daughter, niece or nephew, grandson or granddaughter, brother or sister needs real companionship and understanding. Give them a chance by seeing to it that they have your company during their vacation and yours will be more meaningful by having them with you. In just a moment, we'll tell you about next week's colorful story from the files of your FBI. Once again, friends... Let me remind you that no matter how much you earn, you have a valuable asset in Social Security. And your Equitable Society representative will gladly show you how easy it is to build your Social Security into full security. He'll explain to you how Social Security and life insurance can work together for your complete protection. and will help you determine exactly where you stand under Social Security. No obligation, of course. Phone him tomorrow. Your Equitable Society representative is listed in your local phone book under the name Equitable. E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Sinister Witness. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The role of J. Edgar Hoover was impersonated. However, all other names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner, the author was Frank Ferries, and your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI, is a Jerry Devine production. And now, this is Carl Frank, speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States, and the Equitable Society's representative in your community, and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Sinister Witness. On this is your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>